If you're a fantasy football player, you need to know this. I compare my top 100 wide receivers to their average draft position and notice something strange. These seven stud wide receivers are awful picks this year. Beginning with DK Metcalf, who goes to the 21st wide receiver off the board, which is 15% higher than where he finished last year. And for 82% of Metcalf's games last year, he had Russell Wilson. And now he's got a new quarterback. That man's name is Drew Locke. And in 2020, Drew Locke started 13 games and he was not efficient at all below average in yards per attempt below average in completion percentage but the big one locked ranked dead last amongst all starters 34th completing just 27 percent of his deep passes of 20 or more yards and this is a major issue because dk metcalf relies on deep targets he ranks first the last two seasons so not only will his target quality which was top 25 last year likely drop with a new quarterback not named russell wilson out there but his overall volume 129 targets very strong last year is also likely to drop because on April 21st, head coach Pete Carroll stated the following. We are going to run the ball a lot this year. And fellas, they proceeded to back that up by taking Charles Cross with a top 10 overall pick. Abraham Lucas in the third round. And then with their second pick, they take Kenneth Walker. So the top three picks in the draft this year go towards the running game. Now, Chris Godwin is a massive reach as the 26th wide receiver off the board. I mean, he's being drafted ahead of Brandon Cooks, who has finished as a top 20 wide receivers in back-to-back -back years. And oh yeah, Cooks is healthy because you're drafting Godwin at his absolute ceiling. Let me give you some of the schmacks here. He had ACL and MCL surgery, the rare combo of both on January 3rd. And the average return time for a player from this injury is nine to 12 months because it's very complicated, the recovery. And to prove that it's complicated, look at the quote by his coach Todd Bowles obviously he's better than where he was of course from January when he had the surgery but he's not where he needs to be this might be breaking news to you but Chris Godwin already expected to miss the start of the season is not where he needs to be in his recovery that's not good so if the average recovery time is 9 to 12 months for this combination of the knee injury that he sustained let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and say although he's already behind he gets back in nine months meaning that he would likely return sometime in October so he would miss the beginning of the year September 11th the first game versus the Cowboys he he would likely miss the remaining games in September, so that's three games. Maybe he starts to get a return around this October 9th, the fifth game. So at best, he's missing four games, so nearly 25% of the season. And 0% of the top 25 wide receivers missed that much time last year. Now, this one is really confusing to me. A.J. Brown is still being drafted as a top 10 wide receiver, ahead of guys like Keenan Allen and Michael Pittman, even though he finished as the wide receiver 24 in points per game last year. And now, he finds himself being traded to the Philadelphia Eagles, who ranked 29th in passes per game last year, which was actually 15% fewer than Brown's former team, the Tennessee Titans, who ranked 26. And Philadelphia's low passing volume is likely to continue this year because Philadelphia's greatest strength is this right here, this unit, their offensive line, ranked number one last year in run blocking. And they're returning 100% of their starters and increased their depth in the draft this year. Now, A.J. Brown going 10th overall is suggesting that at the very least, he has to see the volume he saw last year. Year. Brown earned 8.1 targets in 2021. Now, fellas, listen, listen, listen up, because no Eagles player earned more than six targets per game last year. Now, do you want to know the most overvalued wide receiver in drafts? I present to you Jalen Waddell, who goes off the board currently in drafts as the wide receiver 15, a top 15 guy, which, as you can see, is ahead of DJ Moore and Cortland Sutton. However, Waddle will not see as many secure targets this year, and that's because the Dolphins signed Tyree Kill to a four-year $120 million contract. He is the highest paid wide receiver in the league. And last year, Waddle finished as the number 15 wide receiver in fantasy points on 142 targets, top 10 in the NFL. Now, depending on the data you use, some may say 140 targets. Either way, 140 plus targets last year was 48% more than the next closest player on the team, being Mike Gusecki, and nearly double the next closest wide receiver. This simply will not be the case with Tyree Kill in town this season. Now, Ben Roethlisberger retired this offseason. This is going to hurt Deontay Johnson because this yellow line right here indicates the pass attempts since 2020 and Big Ben ranks fifth in the NFL during that time. He actually has 10% more passes than guys like Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford. Yeah, Rodgers back-to-back -back MVP. Now take a look at this. Deontay Johnson ranks fourth during this time with 313 targets. But if you looked at it from a per-game basis, taking out the games that he missed and the games that he leaves early, he averages the second most targets per game since 2020. Only Devontae Adams has more and it's by just 4%. 
Now, I found this next stat to be eye-opening. Johnson's 169 targets last year were the 10th most since 2012. The other nine players saw their average targets decline by nearly 25% the following year. Now, if you took that same average and applied it to what Deontay Johnson saw last year in 169 targets, that means he would lose roughly 40 targets in 2022. Now, next up, you want as few shares of Brandon Ayuk as possible this season. He goes as the 39th wide receiver off the board, and this is ahead of guys like Alan Lazard, and you can see Christian Kirk right here, which is odd because both these men have true shots to be their team's wide receiver one, and Ayuk is the third passing option behind Debo Samuel and behind George Kittle in a run-first offense. He saw 85 total targets, which ranked 42nd overall, but the five targets per game ranked outside the top 75 wide receivers last year. And the volume's not going to get any better with a mobile quarterback and Trey Lance under center in 2022. Now, outside of just avoiding these players in your fantasy drafts, you could actually make some money with this information. Based on what we talked about here, I'm going to be taking A.J. Brown under 1,100 yards this season and Jalen Waddle under 1,050 yards this year. I combine those two together for $20 to win 60 and you can tail this as well. If you use the code SAL on pricepicks.com, you get double your money up to $100. So a free bet, basically. You put in 25, you get 50. You put in 50, you get 100. You can take advantage of this by using the link in the bio. Now, Michael Gallup had very late ACL surgery in February. He had that surgery on February 10th after suffering the injury in early January. Now, based on a nine-month recovery window, it means that he's unlikely to return until early November. So looking at the Cowboys' schedule this year, if he was to miss their three September games and then their five October games, you start to come back. They have a bye in November. If he came back the week after that against the Packers, he's missing eight games, which is 47% of the season. Now get this. Gallup already missed 47% of the games last year in 2021. And he finished as the 74th overall wide receiver last year. So not great. Meanwhile, he's going off the board as the 54th wide receiver this season. Now the early camp reports are going to say, oh, Gallup is looking fantastic because his coaches aren't going to put him down during his recovery. But drafting injured players is a mistake you can easily avoid. And avoiding these seven wide receivers is another way to get ahead of your league mates. Now, if you want to know 12 wide receivers you should be drafting, this video right here is going to help you with that. I'm telling you, fellas, just don't draft the players that got the boo-boos and the band-aids.